Uh, so this was a nine-year-old male, uh, had a history of asthma, swallowing difficulties, uh, and dysphagia. He was admitted after an asthma exacerbation and had a presumed aspiration pneumonia. And he had this kind of vague history of sort of these diffuse intermittent headaches. Um, they were worse with coughing. They were always in the occipital region. Uh, they were always radiating down his neck. He only got some relief with ibuprofen. Uh, he had no other numbness, tingling, uh, no pain. Um, and then he initially reached potty training at age three, but then starting at age four, he would have just this nocturnal enuresis. Um, and then after he had a swallow evaluation, he was basically put on a thick and liquid diet. Um, so during this admission, um, they also noticed a couple of abnormalities on his exam. Uh, so on far right lateral gaze, he had nystagmus. Uh, he had an absent gag reflex. He had some difficulty with his tandem gait. Uh, and then when you actually got down to it, uh, even though he didn't complain of any subjective numbness, he did actually have decreased sensation to pinprick in both of his arms and legs as compared to his face, um, but otherwise was um, intact with no motor deficits. And then this was his scan. <clears throat> so you see a couple very characteristic findings here. Uh, hopefully you can see my cursor, but um, uh, on a sagittal T2, of uh, the cervical spine, you have uh, pons and medulla, and then you have the cerebellum back here, and you see this kind of elongated portion of the cerebellum extending down into the upper cervical canal. Uh, in addition, you see this uh, hyperintensity within the cord uh, that tracks all the way down, and this is kind of a cross section of that. Um, Upon further uh, imaging all the way down, you can see that hyperdensity in the cord really extends down to the mid thoracic spine. So, so of course, what is his diagnosis um, as a clue, because we were talking about Chiari's, his diagnosis is a Chiari one malformation uh, with associated syringomyelia. So just to give kind of a brief uh, reminder of our posterior fossa and cerebellar anatomy, I know the posterior fossa predominantly um, made of the uh, occipital bone in the back here. Uh, that's our primary concern uh, from a surgical standpoint, uh, the foramen magnum, the opening at the base of the skull. And then within our cerebellum, you have these two little areas called the tonsils um, along the medial aspect of the cerebellum, uh, just ventral to the cerebellar hemispheres. And then just as a reminder of our standard CSF flow, uh, we have two lateral ventricles uh, that sit within each of the hemispheres. Uh, they drain through the foramen of Monroe in through into the third ventricle, uh, which then drains out through the aqueduct down into the fourth ventricle, which has three outflow areas, uh, the middle outflow, the foramen of Majandi, and then the two lateral foramen of Lushka. Uh, and when we think about it, this is really the area that we're most concerned about uh, with a carry malformation. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.